Welcome guys to the post qualifying video of R squared racing. It is the Abu Dhabi post qualifying review and we have some exciting things for you. We're going to cover the actual qualifying results, how did it land against our predictions, and we're going to talk about updated race predictions. Stick around. My name's Eric. This is R squared racing and let's get right to it. What's going on guys? Welcome again to another post qualifying video where we're looking this time at the qualifying results and how close we got to it. And if you guys got a chance to watch the early predictions on the weekend preview that we posted, I had my heart in my hand when Q2 finished, because if you took a look at Q2 and looked at our predictions, we were inch close on getting a ton right. We had the entire top six correct if Q2 was the final grid. And unfortunately, a couple of things changed around, but if you even look at the final top six, with the fact that Leclerc could not actually re- perform that massive lap that he did in Q2, then the reality of it is he fell out of the top six and the final top six position was Carlos Sainz. But we still got five people that we predicted in the top six with Lando Norris being that elusive driver that not a lot of people put faith in with Lando being able to perform that well. And we managed to call again you know, not outside of the top three, which is just the most basic thing to count, to predict this time around. But we managed to get Norris in there as well as Albin getting predicted correctly. So Albin is on track to have a good weekend if he can hold on to that position come race day and finish in fourth, which will make an interesting case in the battle for Albin versus Sainz for the Red Bull seat for next year. But let's go ahead and switch it up and let's start talking a little bit about the race. If we switch it around and we now are taking a look at the race predictions, I have updated the AI models. And one small thing to look at before I go into the race models, I took off the DNF prediction. From the last video, if you saw, Lando Norris was predicted to DNF. There were a couple of people that were upset at that. And that's just our AI model, which is still very much a work in progress. So for the effects of this video, I actually took out all DNFs. So I'm not predicting DNFs. I'm not working on things that are very tough to predict with regards to safety cars or DNFs, because that could change everything right off the bat. So a couple of things that we want to take a look at here when we're looking at race predictions, if you're already looking at the screen and not paying attention to anything that I am saying, then you already see that Lewis Hamilton is predicted to win. He will take the checkered flag ahead of Verstappen. And even though Verstappen managed to do an amazing lap and break seven years worth of Mercedes poles, you cannot take away that the fact that Mercedes is dominant all year and Mercedes has been dominant in Abu Dhabi for those seven years. So it'll be very, very difficult to imagine that Max Verstappen could hold on to that when put against the race pace of the Mercedes and the fact that Lewis Hamilton is back. However, the Bata slump is not predicted to improve if we're looking at the numbers, especially because our model looks at recent numbers and puts a heavy weight on that. So in our model, Bottas is not predicted to do very well in this race, which will be very interesting. But if we're looking at the rest of the pack, the rest of the pack is actually quite interesting. So Albin does hold his fourth place position with signs coming in fifth, overtaking Norris, which puts a McLaren 5-6 finish with uh, Perez, not being able to get out of Q2 and not being able to get a time out of Q2, essentially leaving out of 15th and Stroll not doing too well, this puts Racing Point in serious danger. And the roller coaster ride that has been the past three weeks when it comes to the battle for the third place constructor. So something to keep in mind, because if McLaren can land that magical weekend, they may be able to overturn and take that third place constructor, which would be their highest finish since they've decided to change engines uh, into the Honda engine, which was that debacle that followed in 2014 to 
17. Uh, so one of the big things that we want to look at as well is that Leclerc is predicted to have a strong showing again, finishing seventh if he can keep his car on the road. And interestingly enough, Kafia is predicted to finish within the points where his team member, Gasly, who has had a phenomenal year, is not predicted to do that well. So a couple of interesting things here. We will see how this comes about, but I want to be able to put this video out for you guys, especially because the last one came late in the week uh, as we were waiting for Hamilton's COVID test results to know who was driving the Mercedes. But let me know what you guys think. Once again, I appreciate everyone. I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate the feedback. So guys, I hope everyone has a fantastic race weekend. Enjoy the last race of 2020. And we will be back before the start of the next season with some interesting content and analysis of different data points throughout the year. Once again, my name is Eric. This is R Squared Racing and we'll see you soon.